bring out. A lot of question marks, of course, obviously surround Bean, and it is a uh, travesty to not have upset here at the World Championship. Of course, we are wishing him the very best, but I sat, I, I sat there and I talked with uh, Draco this morning around I'm like, if Bean is going to go towards with anyone, Hillisang is probably one of the best supports you could have to go with because <laughs> oh, he yeah. makes every AD carry feel great. He plays extremely well with them, and he's going to enable you the best that he can. Just follow me, young Bean. Yep. Trust in me. <laughs> yeah. I would definitely trust him as a lane, uh, lane mate. And I like that from what Lore said, at least. It, it sounds like Bean is approaching this uh, you know, this big challenge from a point of excitement rather than a place of fear. Sometimes, you know, when the pressure mounts and you have these huge games and you're thrust into a surprising opportunity, people can get really nervous, but uh, we shall see on stage how he ha how he actually answers it. And a lot of credit to Yamato there because he is very much about mm. believing each other. Yeah. The, the it's the path to the peak of the mountain is very much his mantra and we'll see how they stack up against Hanwha as the bands have come through they've already locked in a very early season for Willa and we only have to go back to the best of fives to remember how dominant he was on a champion like this and it's worth noting that you know this is a time where Fnatic gets scouting this is the advantage of, of you know being second seed from your region as opposed to fourth where in Europe's case you wouldn't have even gone if you were fourth but you get to see all the footage of, of what Hanwha Life did that yes Chobi's gonna play the Trinity but yes we've seen how well the Aureli has worked Morgan has spent a couple of champions where he's actually looked good on the champ and has won some lanes where, <laughs> you know, it's been a rough go in summer. But, you know, the, the task in front of Bean, because Hanma Life, like, they had a really, really bad summer split, but by the end, they realized they should be playing around bot side instead of top, and that's where all their wins started coming from, is putting more effort towards Deft and Vista, putting effort down there, and now go redouble that, because you're against a rookie who hasn't even played a single LEC game, let alone an international one. I like how they're setting him up for success with a early pick misfortune here uh, down for the lane phase. Can't have super strong lane phase. Also can afford ultimates to spend early on just on clearing waves if, if necessary. Buying time for Hillisang to roam it can really be a benefit that way as well. And locking in Niski Arise for possible roams fits right in with what you expect here for Fnatic. So I wouldn't be surprised to actually see a support pick locked in now because what they often like to do is to make sure that Hillisang is on something he's as comfortable as possible on and then they rely on Whippo's very deep jungle champ pool to then bring out something later on. Obviously, a lot of respect jungle bands thrown towards Whippo to sit there and challenge him, but perhaps that they will lock in the early jungler. Of course, this Graves can be very much flexed, but right now, my assumption is that it will be moving towards the mid lane. Yeah, already one game from Whippo during playoffs on it. And Adam, I really want to see Adam more on on some of these champions like the Olaf uh, that, that we don't get to see a lot of other top laners utilize. You know, maybe throw a Darius in there, that that type of thing, especially when you're going versus Morgan, who, if you're looking at Hanwha Live, Morgan is, is the person that gets the most criticism ever of any point on this team and can be a point that you would want to attack. Yeah, I spent a, spent a year in WE in the LPL and came to the LCK and, uh, you know, it hasn't, it hasn't been turning a lot of heads in a good way, but uh, we're gonna wait as we go through the draft. I, if you've been listening to people talk about League of Legends, talk about Korea, if you've heard people talk about Chovy, there's a lot of stats you can say about Chovy. There's one that I like that's interesting. Uh, so in, in nine games, all split long, he's had a negative CSD. He's been down in lane. Double that number, he's been up more than 20. <laughs> like, and it's obviously like the other, like, you know, plus one, plus 19, like there was a bunch more, but just he's more likely to be up 20 than down one or fewer. Like, it's absurd how good he is in the early game. Yeah, lane phase is definitely the the crown jewel for him as well and the, and the hallmark of this team. So let's cut through it, though. The Braum comes in for the defensive option down there uh, into the Aphelios Thresh here for Fnatic, uh, locking in some extra protection here, allowing Hilly uh, to combine with, uh, with Bean for both protecting minion waves as well as being able to take them down. Well, uh, Hilly is yes. a little bit famous for his level one Braum, too, so we'll see how mm. things pan out in the bot lane. But Yasuo plus Kennen going to be locked in for Hanwha Life. So this is very much a Chovy game. He is picking out, like, Yone was something that he really stood out on during the regular season throughout the year, and now he's going to go for his brother in the form of Yasuo. But we're going to answer with a set from Adam. So he's going to be looking to get much more aggressive up towards the top side of the map. He really likes to play these bruises that can get in your face and trade in lane. Adam had something like nine... He had a ridiculous number of solo kills during the regular season, and while he does die a lot, be warned that he will try to fight you in the 1v1. 
And we've seen a couple times the, you know, teams self banning basically the Jace, leaving it open there for a cannon pick because when Jace is banned, then it's it's more enticing be uh, you know to blind pick a cannon for top lane because one of the biggest, you know, lane counters isn't there. So, we've seen actually a couple teams nudging the other <laughs> into picking an early cannon and it definitely paid off previously. All righty, so we're loading onto the rift and it's going to be a difference of experience here. Deft with 70 international games. Adam, a rookie this split. Whippo, roll swap to jungle this split. And being a last minute substitution, hasn't played in a league bigger than EU Masters. Yeah, he got to the finals there. Look, he's played on some level of pressure, but now you're up at Worlds against Deft of all players. Any AD carry <laughs> worth their salt knows to respect Deft and his long legacy of, of success. It's, it's actually, very surreal, the situation the Fnatic find themselves in right now. You're going up against some pretty crazy players in the form of Chosy and Def, and uh, Fnatic will be fielding these rookie rosters. And experience is definitely something that's so standing, because when you kind of look at also the history of this organization, while Fnatic has like eight years of competitive experience, the individual experience is actually so low with two EU Masters players, uh, and Niski, not making it to Worlds. I, well. I feel like this game is being set up to be an advertisement for EU Masters. <laughs> hey, come now. We use every these. opportunity, Kobe. <laughs> look, so. at the, look at these prospects. You too could nab one for yourself. I mean, it's great. It, it is one of the interesting things about um, like professional League of Legends in Europe is mm. is there are other leagues than LEC in the greater continent of Europe. Niski got his start playing one split in Turkey, then one split in Russia, then came to North America, then went back to Europe. And uh, Whippo in a very similar boat. I think actually, sorry, he was the one who played uh, in Turkey, then Russia. But Niski played in Turkey and then went to NA. And it's like there are there are Maybe other leagues you can fun. kind of go to. So yeah, there, there's so much place to get experience. It's there, there's a lot of slots to, to kind of level up and, and be ready for that kind of experience. <laughs> I like so a, here we are. I like how you include uh, NA as one of the other. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that you a can lot play of a lot Europe. of aspiring <laughs> strong European players come to play in the LCS. Uh, I feel included. It's just true. You know? We're so basically, uh, Fnatic's also representing NA. I like oh, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got That's there eventually. Okay. Here is the delayed invade <laughs> onto Red Buff from Fnatic. <laughs> All right, I like this one, though. They are passing through their own vision. I believe they weren't spotted on this walk, but Willer, of course, knows to play on the safe side of this one. Um, looks like we're not going to have too much spice going in here. Willer is saving his smite. Theoretically, there's a chance he fights this red buff. He's actually going to spot the, the grave, so if you're really lucky, and he's like, yeah, I have to smite that. I have to be smart about this one. But careful, red buff difference means a level two Lee Sin is not going to be too happy. We'll be able to get away and should have no problem going after the Raptors. But if you really do this, oh my gosh, what, Whippo? I don't think you kill him. It's it's okay that you don't kill him because you just completely neutered him. He has no jungle. He crosses over. Chad moved to take out his blue side jungle. They preemptively have already control warded the river here. And the Leeson has no health potions left. He's so low. Willer is just getting beaten up. Niski, though, getting beat up a little bit here as well. Will Trophy Lander Tornado no going to be sidestep? But yeah, Willis says, okay, I'm going to start blue buff. No, I'm not. Uh -oh. That's Illusan. Okay, this is here. Ignite Q has to flash away, and Will is still on one camp. And that's why it was such a bold, just heroic move there from Whippo to in your oh face between words. your towers cross over. He's not looking for the kill, he's looking to, to beat Willer out of his own jungle because his bottom lane with the extra ward through river can easily defend it. Just so well done and set up from Fnatic. Fnatic. That that confidence. This man just roll swapped the jungle, and he's juggling on your side of the map. He's just. But the thing about Bwipo is he. This is just him in a nutshell. He's like, can I fight this guy? Yeah, I can fight this guy. And it's just the awareness to then move into the top side, deny everything from Willa. And now look, the classic Adam Rome, level three. He's in the mid lane. Flash for the root, but they're gonna get a lot of this blocked off. Decent damage, but Chobi will survive. Flash down, though. Flash trade to the mid laners. But TP difference between Niski can get back in the lane for oh pressure. Willer has two camps. Willer, I mean, we know he can't go anywhere. He tried opposing blue, Fnatic Rome. He got his own Krugs, great. You're not getting a scuttle. You're not getting a gank off. Oh You're word. on two camp. Take a recall. No, See you I later. Inject this right into my veins. I am just <laughs> busting out of this box right now. Holy moly, Bwipo. 
I was already so impressed at how well and how quickly he adapted to this role swap from Fnatic. I have to be honest, when I first heard about it, I was very skeptical. And, and yet he became, in just one year, one of the one of the top junglers in, in Europe. And he is absolutely blasting here on, on the world stage with, yes, the help of the team, but it is about setting up and coordinating with your lanes for protecting those areas of the jungle. Guess what? Willer is still level two on this champion. Uh -huh. Oh, no he gets away from it. Still gets pulled back in. Chovy is punched. And the rookie, Adam from France, finds first blood at Worlds. So this is just... This is this is Adam. This is what he does. He's not a top laner. He's jungler number three on Fnatic. <laughs> All of them looking to play for mid lane. What they do is they try to unlock Niski on the map so that he can start to roam. They invested the early flash, and then Adam comes down for the repeat gank. Yes, he's behind in CS. He'll be able to catch some of this farm, but from his perspective, he's like, my job's done. Now that Chovy is dead, now that Niski has more gold and can roam, this is when Niski then starts to pay it back I, to the rest I, of his I got vibes of the Gladiator movie instead of a, this is Adam. This is Adam! And he just kicks Chovy into the, into the pit. First blood. <laughs> on the superstar from Hanwha life. But this is also why, like, so many top laners in Europe, like, they get, they get really annoyed with Asm because they're like, he won't 1v1 me. <laughs> Just goes mid lane. He goes mid lane at level 2, level 3, level 4. And what Niski often gets so praised for is how well he uses lead. So now, eyes fall on Niski. Can he leverage this advantage that he's been able to gain in mid to successfully set up the rest of the map? So uh, that EU Masters ad looked pretty good too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I will say though, if we check gold, I bet you Niski's not actually ahead of Chovy. He was on a shared assist, and Chovy is Chovy. The man is still winning in farm, despite being camped. This is what he does. This is why he is such a legendary mid laner. His gold difference at like 15 across the play ins was 990. Like, the man just shatters mid laners for breakfast. He's up 6 CS right now, and. I mean, he can still be killed to flash his Yasuo, but he's doing real well for himself still. Yeah, problem is uh, he's got a jungler on 18 CS uh -huh. there versus a Bwipo <laughs> that has 47. And we'll see how that one turns out because it's a Yasuo with no flash. And when you're playing, again, melee mid laners, there's so many other factors you have to take into account. Yes, you're playing against Ryze, but Nisku is happy to trade his flash there because he's got jungle pressure. He has possible roams as well coming in that can more easily punish. You as bottom side does get hooked in, but no commitment. I think Walk that away. both AD carries really want a reset here, but with Hanwha having the priority, and keep my eyes on mid right now, because as you mentioned, Chovy, even though he's put a lot of pressure down, will have the first rotation. Whipple gets a smite there. Willa couldn't get that one, but he's going for the flash away. Flay back into the Yasuo! Deft gets the kill, but already Chovy's out of lane. There to set it up, and a great setup by Vista. It's just a faster collapse from Hanwha. They had the better setup around the bot wave, and Chovy was able to rotate in through mid into the river first. They really needed this to get a little bit back for Willa and to try and put Bwipo down. Yeah, Willa definitely needed that. You can tell Bwipo's mentality there is, I'm not get, letting this little shrimp get anything, okay? Yeah, my crab, okay? His team comes to his aid, though. That was pure team difference there. Hanwha allowing the kill. Now bottom side, though, depth with the Ignite burning. But he's still running away, has all his summoners though. And they just baited an inhaler song. Oh, he punches them! Def didn't hit his summoners! He didn't heal, and that means Fnatic are gonna find the kill. The play is not gonna be enough. Whippo's in for the kill, a huge mistake. Has now more than run away. Adam just pushed them out of the lane. Oh, you just got beamed right there! <laughs> Like flash cube. It was, but I wanted to say the bean line. I know. Yeah, it's no, a lot I, see, better. I respect it. <laughs> but my word, that uh, I mean, Def was not prepared for that at all. Uh, completely caught him off guard. And I think one of the biggest problems here for Dean is, yes, he does get hooked initially. A lot of the damage does get mitigated, though, and he's pretty low on mana here. Doing what he can to stay into this, there's also a lot of minions, and you can see that now he's completely out of mana. He doesn't want to flash commit because he's not convinced he has the damage. But Hela Sang's like, it's okay, I have the damage. I will flash commit and secure the kill. Now, Adam in a 2v2. A lot of danger, no ulti available, but has Hela Sang in his back pocket. Fnatic support doing so much heavy lifting in this game. A really, truly stellar player. One to keep your eyes on. He's a lot of the reason why Fnatic has been successful in these years. And, and as Betty mentioned, he's the reason why so many people still had confidence in Fnatic here. Like, you know what? It's fine. Bean, he was in finals, EU uh, Masters. Sure. As long as you have Hillisang, you can just follow him 
take his hand, he will lead you, and he does exactly that with the flash play there. So Fnatic, very happy to get Hillisang out and open into roaming as well as the Rift Herald is started up by Willer. Willer able to leech enough XP to reach level 6. At least he's got his ultimate up there. Ulti combo gonna come in. Not a ton of damage. Definitely able to sidestep that one. Let's get pulling in Hillisung. Level 5. And Shock is down for Vista, so pretty squishy here. Will there be a team fight? Not right now. Willer gonna save on that smite. Both junglers are around. Whippo needs to wait a few more seconds. This might not just yet, but it Round will more. be in time. That's going to be Harold resetting anyway. It's not going to matter. So I noticed that Nisku is actually backing up there to get closer to Adam so that he could use the Realm Warp to bring him in a little bit faster. Should a fire actually kick off. Morgan's ultimate is just about to come up. Good to play to go for. He's got Flash. He's got the Sork Shoes there as well. Bumbaton to zone out the rest of the team. Will is still waiting around, though. I will not put it in smite range just yet, but it's still waiting a team fight. Bot is going to battle under the turret here as well. Realm Warp trying to find the play as Adam comes in. Yasuo dies in, and they're going to find the kill on a Graze. One for zero so far. Adam going to get the punch, going to flash to safety. Hook on a Hillisong means kill number two, and Chovy just routinely activated there. Niski forced to flash to safety. Willer will miss the Q as Meanwhile, Bean is forced out of the bottom lane, so Hanwha Life wins on both halves of the map. Exactly. Huge victory here for Hanwha Life. Great focus. You can see they immediately go on to Bwipo. 100% to zero there. They get the knockup on him into the cannon stun, taking him down, being able to burn out the, uh, the Rift Herald fight, as well as Deft on bottom side. Because Bean already used his combo with his ultimate, he pushes him out of the tower, earns a turret play for himself simultaneously. So Hanwha get right back into it. And look at how quickly Hanwha are able to claim control of this as well. So the ultimate in, will a follow up, and then the flay is actually what sets up the ultimate for Chovy to then one-shot Whippo. Yes, he is very strong. He does have a level advantage over the enemy jungler, but he's still quite squishy, especially this early on into the game. So the moment that he drops, Fnatic then lose a lot of their damage and their ability to commit to the fight. And again, Chovy, Death. Two of the people that we talked about for Hanwha Life coming into this game, you can see how dominant they are being in their respective lanes. They, they are players that you have to rely on and have to respect because they know how to build leads for themselves. The small saving grace there for Fnatic was that because Whippo did stay on the Rift Herald, they got the Rift Herald kill and, and Niski was able to go in and pick up the Herald. Uh, cost him his flash in order to get out and not die afterwards, but at least they did pick up the Herald in the aftermath, and that doesn't show on gold scoreboard right now, but should be a lot more money into Niski's pockets directly. Yeah. Usually when, you know, Jungler picks up Rift Herald, uh, obviously you're going to have to share at least half of your Rift Herald Rift uh, plate money with the jungler, but you can funnel the rise basically with Niski picking it up and try and get to the point where you can have the split push rise. Niski doesn't have to share. That can always be nice. Adam, by the way, going full tank. We often see uh, AD versions of set, but this time around he is going for some kind of a Sunfire build. The Bombi Cinder is in. That means he has to lock in for a tank mythic. I uh, want to point out though that three turret plates have already been taken by Deft. We obviously know the loss of upset is a big blow to Fnatic, and that turns into 27 CS and three turret plates. Deft is going to be a much bigger factor than Bean is on Misfortune here. Look for the hook, not going to land it. A couple of slows, though, might mean Vista could be killed. As Hillsong has to walk on back, Willer does not want to take the fight. Might have not had a ward to hop to. Is now Adam's forced to run away. The combo comes in, rise instantly dead, and they're going to look for the set there as well. Stopwatch to buy time, but still a two for zero. Hanwha Life just completely crushing Vista. Gets a double flay. No knock up in for Jovi. Deft's got to be a little bit careful as it is going to be Fnatic walking back to the turret. And the collapse from Hanwha once again, absolutely flawless. Chovy's already making his way down. Morgan is able to match the TP from Adam, and they're effectively able to punish Fnatic. And a lot of that came from a poor engage from Illisang. He used his W early onto a minion to try and set up the passive early. But because of that, Death saw a window where he could then look for the re-engage. And this is where Hanwha Life then start the fight in their favor. Exactly. Chunking down Hillisang early, then being able to have Chovy early rotate down, they section off the team fight, force away the rest of the members that were here early, and they can just collapse on the double teleport. Even with them both arriving, Fnatic kind of like the Rift Herald's uh, fight, we're a little bit split here, and so Hanwar able to focus fire down, immediately annihilate uh, Niski, and then finish up Adam afterwards, catching him on the edge of that stun. Gale forces now in for Ophelio, so he's ready to get out if he needs to, or follow in and get the assassination. Kick and he also always really clean and easy. Fnatic gonna go ahead and look at mid lane turret right now. 40 seconds left on turret plates, and that means that they knock down two. They would love to summon it. Niski needs to actually hit that button at this point, honestly, to summon it here and knock down the wave. I think a little bit, uh, there we go. Does get it. They are gonna find probably plates two, three, and four of this one, and it will be a lot of gold in Niski, but they will not get the entire turret as top lane just being solo pushed. 
good timing. Harold gets all three plates, and Niski gets plus 480 for that one. Keeps going a little bit closer, but yeah, Morgan alone in top lane. He's up 40 in farm right now, and he's getting his third plate almost. And this is one of the big advantages for Morgan because of how often that Adam roams around the map. He's just been freely allowed to sit in the one versus uh, zero, uh, pick himself up towers, pick himself up farm, and he's getting very close to his first item. And while these early roams paid off a little bit for Adam, Freak, you were talking about it, it didn't really affect Chovy that much. He still had priority pretty consistently in his lane. He was still building up CS advantages, and you only have to look at the scoreboard to recognize, yeah, there's a huge jungle difference right now. But the laners, all going in favor of Harmon. And, you know, because Bupo invested in steel caps uh, and Morgan being the one left alone, he doesn't have the MR or the tenacity for these big cannon ultimates. Morgan can, can make or break this game for, for Hanwha. Uh, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a very big impact there. Very high importance on your flank wards here for Fnatic, but also Adam on the set has a big job as far as ulting the cannon out to deny that big cannon ultimate. Uh, if he completely <laughs> stuffs Morgan, then things will be just fine for them. Good play by Vistum. Able to read that it was going to be aggressive towards his teammate. Was already playing towards the back. Easily pulls Deft back, no problem. Gives us a little crab emote. Nice Cloud9 shout out there as Hillisong just gets jumped on and he is going to almost drop. Oh, yep, he's going to still burn down. Thank you to, I believe, the end of a Calibrum snipe. Ignite helping with that one as well from Vista, and that is a kill confirmed. 7 to 3 for Han Wildlife Esports. Vista and Def, baby. Another one locked up here. Really nice uh, move there from Vista. Play in, timing on the Ignite as well. Finish him off, and uh, this is going to be, again, you already mentioned, but the, the Aphelios carry towards the mid stages is going to be a yeah. big thing here for Hanwha. Well, sadly, Niski unable to get out of his lane. You know, we talked about the fact that he's supposed to pay his team back, and I've always loved Niski for his ability to roam. I think he's been a really good map player overall across his career. But this is one where, despite being on a rise, despite having a TP advantage permanently, having, you know, multiple ways to get across the map, his only assist is the one that his team gave him by going to his lane. It's true. He's been, he's really struggled. And, like, in this matchup, a really good Yasuo player can just keep the, uh, the rise locked underneath his turret. And Funnily enough, Chovy is a really good Yasuo. Ah, weird. <laughs> weird like that, yeah. Uh, and he's been doing a great job. He's been making the rotations first. We saw it at the beginning in the river against Whippo. Uh, we see it again in the roam towards bot lane. And even though Chovy doesn't have TP, it still feels like that he's everywhere that he needs to be at the right time. So props to the rest of Hanwha Life stepping up when Willa was put so far behind because many junglers would really struggle to recover after a deficit like that. Got to rely on your team in those scenarios. He did that to get the bottom side grab. Now he's, uh, you know, getting Rift Road while the last remnants of the mid turret are picked up. Those are indefensible by Hanwha, so it's going to be sacrificed no matter what. And it's nice to get uh, your trades on the other side. You, you're pushing down top map. You'll, you will get the top side turret, plus you'll get second Rift Herald. So uh, good exchange here for them. There we go, turret knocked down. Gold difference about 2,200. Certainly it's going to feel good for Hanwha Life fans and players, but this is not insurmountable. Fnatic are still in this one. Uh, honestly, Rai's side lane can still scale, of course. Graves, once he gets to his second uh, item there, once the Eclipse comes through, like that should feel pretty good. So not out of it just yet, but obviously it has been a Hanwha life for most of this game. So something that we haven't seen much of is the use of Wind Wall against Bullet Time and how effective it can actually be in some of the upcoming fights. And I think the Chovy, as he often is, will be a player worth watching because you know even if an MF is a little bit behind in the laning phase, that ultimate can just rip through an entire enemy team, but a single wind wall could mitigate all of it. Yeah, there's a lot of things that you have to keep in mind as being when you're looking for your ultimates, as you know, Dragon is picked up here by Fnatic with the early positioning before a, a collapse of Hanwha. Yes, y you have to worry about wind wall, which is, is extremely frustrating. You're also going to have to worry about, you know, the cannon flanks where he's constantly looking to come in with that sun so you, you cannot stand in the same spot. Plus, yeah, Willer can still provide value to this team, even though he has kept down so heavily in the early game. If you get a good flank into kick, all you need is a good kick for Chovy, and, and Yasuo comes flying in. So there are there's so many things with positioning that they're going to have to look at and, and try and adapt here as, as Hanwa start to move their vision lines in deeper and deeper and make those rotations uh, more difficult. When's the next play? That's the question. Because we have had the Dragons answer back. Hanwha Life didn't make the big play for the bottom side. So Fnatic 
I mean, at the very there. least, buys a ton of breathing room, and that they're not going to be facing this Cloud Soul for a very long time. But here comes the dive. Three on. Kick and ulti. It's a guaranteed combo, and Niski just cannot get away. But the answer back on a Morgan. That's not going to happen either. The dunk will not be in range of anything. Finds Vista, but that is just still not a target to get anything out of as the mid lane turret, or sorry, bot lane turret falls. Yep, there's three. your value right there. Willer, yep. go in, get the kick. Yasuo, surgical removal of Niski. Plus, as you mentioned, pushing on bottom side for Deft. He has been relentless. It's just advantages across the board right now for Hanwha, looking extremely clean. And obviously, they looked... Well, their only loss in the playing stage was to LNG, and many even questioned whether that was largely down to a draft difference. Like because they were playing very well in the early game, and the analyst has talked about would they be able to get early game leads against this Fnatic squad, and like, sure, they were killing them a bunch. It wasn't like they were dominating them because of how far behind their jungler got put, but their laners were reliable as they often are. You looked at Chovy, you looked at Def as being these consistent factors, and then Morgan being given so much freedom in his one versus one as Adam yeah. tried to assist the rest of the map that didn't really result in anything. Now Fnatic find themselves 3K gold behind, and it just feels like the Hanwha life have so much more control on the map. And remember, Adam, he just invested his flash and ultimate on a support, which then didn't even result in a trade back in kill. So Fnatic definitely struggling right now against Hanwha. Adam gonna go ahead and fight for the wave as Chovy clears it out, finds a little bit of punch damage, finds a short stun, but Chovy unperturbed. He's got a knockup, he's got a combo. They're gonna just assassinate this poor tank set. Merc Treads affect nothing across those two champions. Now Whippo found himself with a 1v2. He's got steel caps. That does not help against Cannon either, but they might find damage on the Morgan. The burst comes across and they find that kill. This even brings some minions for a party. Ooh, Fnatic really needed that one to, to be able to save Whippo there, get the kill for themselves. And because they're able to get that pickoff on Morgan, they also get bottom side turret. But Rift Guild ushered all the way into the inhibitor turret for that charge. And Willer's looking for another dive on mid. This is dangerous. Yeah, Bean's going to get rid of that. Means the rest of the combo is going to land. No problem. He went for the wave clear, but Bean set it up. Sorry, Def set it up. Uh, to be fair, Bean set himself up. But yes, the kill came across, and it's still Hanwha life pretty much everywhere. A second turret does go down. It's some money back in the pocket, but now we're at a 4,000 gold difference. A second flawless dive from Hanwha life in the mid lane. Very well done to punish Bean. Now, Fnatic trying to look for something back. Hillisang, unfortunately, unable to land anything. And how Deft actually doing so much damage could turn this around. He's down just to about 1,000 health. Gets flayed back in as well. This is dangerous. He might be rooted. He's got a quick shield. The lock had helped but now we've got to oh. re-engage. And yes, Chovy is in. Gets one. Hooked by some time. And now Adam punches and dies. This is 12 to 4. Han Wa Life, a cut above. Ah, the members of Chovy Life Esports never faltered for a second. You get first blood on Chovy, but the Church of Chovy stands strong. And now it is looking at Baron, warded up behind the backside of Baron too. So even though Whipple can try and get in here for a steal, does have smite, no blast cone, no flash. All right, what can he even do? Because, yeah, Whippo could ult backwards to get into range. You could dash forward, and they're not going to get him in there. Mm, nope, not going to happen. Zone out at the end. Had a chance to jump in, but not going to come through. So, Baron claimed the 22 minutes, and this is all Hanwha life. Oh, that was clean from Chovy. And it's so cool getting his perspective, because look at how he uses the ultimate to get onto the back line, gets onto the graves as well. And then he has the shield from the shield bow to offer that extra bit of protection and then the spacing around Adam. Just such flawless execution from the side of Hanwha Life. And it feels like that at every point after the early game shenanigans, they have just gotten the better of Fnatic. They've moved around the map better. They have collapsed better. And they have individually outperformed Fnatic. Yeah, I just like from that replay how he charges up his Q on the Raptors and, and quickly enters the fight. Yep, Axemic replay. Chovy effect, pretty strong. But I got to say, it, you know, as much as people like to say it's Chovy Life, the entire team has done a lot here. He was, you know, picked down in lane, but Vista had so many good setups every single time. Wheeler goes in for the kick to make sure the ult's gonna land. And now Whippo in a fight. Knock him is found. Adam is probably gonna drop. Has a big shield, buys some time, goes for the duck, but it's still just two for nothing. Depth has been activated. He's got the damage output here. Nilsung's days are numbered. The triple kill for the bot laner now as Chovy's in the chase for a bit more, but he's gonna be able to kite away and stay alive. Dragon gonna be on a silver platter. That looks like a really good team fight for Fnatic, but once again, it's this wind wall that came up clutch in the choke point. Flash oh! in, great oh! predicted. Nice flash hook from Vista. The bottom lane of Hanwha has just smashed this entire game.
Not to mention, um, Morgan went with the Horizon Focus. Item number two here on Kennen for max burst damage, max punishment on anyone who did buy Steel Caps. He is the only AP here on Hanwha, so he has to be a big threat. And he's gone full offense, Kennen build. Yeah, no stopwatch, but also no Banshee's Veil, no nothing. It's all kill, no defense. I got to point out, by the way, Vista, they got to shout out all the former AD carries who became supports. Okay. Made the swap this year. Here he is at Worlds. So far, practically undefeated. You no, know, there have been a lot of role swaps from multiple roles to support that. Yeah. Been very successful. As we see in this replay, though, uh, starts out with another one of the knockups. But I want to keep my eyes on Depp because Depp has been crushing it. Picks up the double kill here. He's got red white guns, so you cannot go close. He chases him down, dashes in with the Gale Force there, finishes off another close range with the. Uh, okay, never mind. We got another one. La. We got a kick and a wait on the ult that Hillsong has to flash and W to get to safety. But stays alive, so okay, fair enough. Only a summoner forced out, but it's still map control. Man, every time Willa kicks, Chovy ults. It's just literally every time. Sometimes it's instant, sometimes he waits, but whoever gets kicked is getting ulted by Chovy. The communication between the mid-jungle flashing from Niski. Flash follow, it's good work. There's a lot of damage, and Depp flashes the second half of the queue. Bullet time buys a bit of it, but now Niski Load up and kill. Death gets a follow through, but Adam is there. There's the duck. Somebody he'll buy some time. Adam needs one more punch, and he gets some 950 on the top later for that one. And now Fnatic have to run. Be careful, the Whippo could be chased down. Here comes the Q to follow, and you got Morgan in the back line there as well. Whippo's shield bow is popped, but Willer, that was perfect timing. The Q landed just as shield bow ended and assassinates the jungler. Revenge, freak, revenge. Yeah. It takes a while. You got to rely on your team for a while. Get me this crab. Get me this kill. I'll kick for your ultimates. I'll kick for your ultimates. Finally, he gets his revenge on Whippo for the early invades. Uh, and that is definitely some strong mental from him there. Not yep. tilting. You mentioned when you know junglers get reduced down to not even a single quadrant, but still are able to persevere. Yep. Uh, go ahead. Take this replay. Vedius, we got some cool fights here. So this is just Fnatic looking to try and get back into the game. They see... Uh, deft in the mid lane, and they see an opportunity to try and make a play happen. Unfortunately for Fnatic, it didn't quite pan out the way that they wanted it. Just beautiful dancing backwards from Hanwha. The way in which they kite back, of course, Deft is kind of left out to die, but there's a lot that they can do because they recognize there's so much more to gain on the top side. Really great patience here from Willow, the use of the lantern as well to give him an escape option, but they're just waiting for Morgan to come in from the flank to then get more kills. And Willa, who was put so far behind earlier, is dominating. And we got to see, actually, why Collector could be good on Aphelios with the red buff. That's what killed off Niski. A red buff tick was like, ah, and Collector. Otherwise, no one was hitting him, and Ryze is going to free fire. So that is part of the reason, like, we've seen the, like, Lord Dominic versus Collector, like, arguments online. There's just, like, one evidence piece in favor of Collector. Sometimes that, that tick really does matter. That execute does matter. And now, with a 10,000 gold lead, they managed to bait out the ulti from Hillisong. So not going to be a pickoff there. And Hanuma Life able to keep on pushing forward. I like that we did get to see an attempt at a Fnatic brush play here. Yeah. But right before Hanwha are about to push in on the base, Depth handles mid lane while Chovy's got top the rift. It's there. Nice try. Willer kicks. Not going to be the follow through just yet. Rooted in place, and there is the wind wall. Buy some time, stay alive. But the wave is gone. Fnatic gonna keep defending. They're not gonna be easy to kill off this set. <laughs> nah, he's tanky. I just love how <laughs> Willer's like, I got you, Chovy, I'm here. Goes in for the kick. Joe's like, I am not taking that one. You have to yeah, know no, when no, to no. hold them. <laughs> yep. That was definitely a hold there. It's not really gonna cost them everything. Very, very low cooldown on your kick to go in for there. They've still got full control of the map. Look at this mini map. Please toggle us the vision and you will see how lights out looks for Fnatic. It's all on their side of the map. Han will have fully moved up their vision line. Uh, in fact, trying to uh, get some territory. They've only basically got, yeah, the, the one Fnatic rush there with their one lone control ward outside the base. They've been pinging it for us. How nice of Fnatic to be like, yeah, these are where our wards are, guys. This is what we can see. Um, so thank you for, uh, I don't know, they're not watching the stream, obviously, but uh, <laughs> we got the next Baron coming up soon. The first one looks pretty good. Several thousand gold. I want to say it's like 4,800 maybe the first time the Hama Life Esports got it. And now they're going to go ahead and grab the second. And it seems likely they try to force a fight around here at the very least, because again, with the 10,000 gold lead, you can take pretty much any five on five and it looks pretty good. Wheeler, not going to go for the big kick play. Does respect his durability. Does not have his GA done. His stopwatch is broken, so he can be assassinated. Hysterically, his only defensive tool in that regard. So 
back he goes to the river. But the I Baron mean, setup begins. What I think is crazy about Hanwha is, they, uh, yeah, they don't need... Oh, Willa, that's a lot of damage. But they don't actually need him for the Baron because Chovy and Deft can just two-man it with a Yasuo and a Felios who burn the Baron so quickly they just can't afford to flip it. And I like the fact that they're now backing off. They realize that Fnatic has a little bit too much control of their side of the jungle and instead they're going to disengage. Go take themselves the free Drake back off for now and just be comfortable. You know, well, you know what, guys? We have a 10k gold lead. Yep. We don't need to throw this. Let's instead just take the easier objectives and, uh, and I'll take our time with what seems to be a guaranteed win at this point for Han. Exactly. They want to get this dragon quickly here to try and get the soul arrival a bit quicker uh, onto the map as well. You know, Cloud Soul would actually be nice for this one. Mention how important it is for, you know, positioning and, and being able to get in there for those big cannon ultimates. Uh, will be quite nice for Morgan. He's got a stopwatch, by the way. Yeah. One use for a big team fight and still continues on with so much damage. This, this, this cannon flank is going to be extremely frightening. And it's just thematic with Yasuo. So how can you not go for it, realistically? You know, you want as many as possible. It just makes you feel good. Uh, I do want to point out, though, you talked a bit ago about uh, the sort of tilt-proof nature of Willer. Yeah. Yeah, if I, if I told you, hey, there's a game where uh, one jungler gets two camps, the other gets eight on the first clear, uh, one of them is 4 0 and 12, one of them is 2 4 and 1. Who would you attribute that to? You know, you'd be like, wow, well, the guy who got jungle dipped really hard is probably 2 4 and 1. Nah, Willer un undeathed, I don't know, a deathless here in this one. Undead, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, he's, he's just been for every fight, for every setup, and, and the goal difference has not mattered. He's been at the right place the right time. I think that Kobe just set it up really nicely earlier on in the game. Is this key? Kick? Here's the kick. Pretty beautiful. Stopwatch will be used. The frontline's going to be there. Hillisong running away, puts the shields on, and Niski runs away for dear life, but Dev just cuts him down one auto easier thanks to collecting the gold. And now mid lane can be under a bit of fire. Adam gets the wave clear and walks away. Yeah. So as you can see, Hanwha basically get to do whatever they want. Their AD carry is higher level than every single Fnatic member. Chovy is level 17, and this Baron should be pretty easy for them to secure. The biggest hope the Fnatic have is that Whippo can find some sort of Miracle Steal, but look at Morgan here, lying in wait, zoning Whippo away from the objective. Time I want to deny 50-50 as much as possible. All right, TVs come in. This is kind of the make or break moment, or it's all lights out. Fnatic gonna try, jump through the pit, and it was smiteable, but still claimed. Willer is able to make it happen. One for zero in the team fight, as of course Graves will die. Morgan is low, but Morgan is not going to stop. Then it's time to get a bit more. Flash away from the hook. Adam is going to spot Death, but he's going to be rooted in place. So that's going to be a follow through. The shots come in, a quick shield, but they want to chase this one. The flash in. Not going to get it just yet, though, but a kick is there. A knockup is in. Under the tower they go. Chovy gets the double, and they're going to get the last one. Hillisong will indeed drop. This is game over. 25 to 5. Whippo was heroic in the level two jungle skirmish. Incredible play there. They put some pressure on a Chovy. They found first blood. The first few minutes belonged to Fnatic. The entire rest of it belonged to Han Wildlife Esports. The better team for sure as they sit and wait for one final kill. Hey, Whippo, that was really rude of you at the start. They missed the hook. Doesn't matter. Nexus falls and Han Wildlife start with a win. Bottom side, Deft and Vista actually crushed it this entire game, save for the single surprise flash, uh, Q flash from Hillisang to, to get them a single kill there. All the rest of it, though, so many picks, so many setups with good flays, good flash hooks uh, from Vista, as well as Deft pumping out the damage. Then Morgan also on the top side of the map, making them pay for leaving him alone. Huge AP threat for the team. And as you said, can always rely on Chovy there. So big, big Yasuo player all around here from Hanwha. Uh, you know, good game. I think that Willa was just really instrumental as well in the sense that he kicked, yeah. Chovy ulted. And